slug of shield, field, and sandy fern still stood in the 60s. Only just holding on to the cobbled post-war city's industrial hill, looking down at the time, at shipyards and manufacture in steady decline. For years it was said that they had to go, for too long had this rabble formed a smoked black tableau of buildings, of coal, of dirty children destined for the dole. So just before the relinquished control, the government plans were set in motion. A well thought out political potion to cure the ills of northern cities. Private subcontracted architects, yeah, I'm still talking about the 60s, were asked to stack the poor on top of one another. Father, brother, sister, mother, in sky buildings of concrete and glass. A way to rid the landscape of the discreet mass of builders and miners and shipwrights, the working class. Peggy Mary's boarding house stood at the sandy fed end. No children of her own, but a confidant and a friend. Softly spoken, if she had a room to spare, she'd lend a bed or an ear of those in despair. And then the council announced their plans for demolition and people around her left of their own volition to other shanty towns and prefabs up in Benwell, but Peggy wouldn't move and neither would her personal hotel. But Peggy, who wants waterlogged bond to shit rubble? It's not like it to be causing trouble. No, give us cobble and brick. Nay, plastic paper walls, they won't withstand the next war. I've lived here all my life and I'm not leaving unless they give us something more. So she told the council that she would not move henceforth. Couple days later, my granddad's got the telly on. Yeah, Jean! Whoa, Peggy's on Love North! And there she was, refusing to move. Somewhere between a businesswoman and an activist, the sole protagonist, the council's key antagonist. I wonder what she cared about more, the boarding house or the social cleansing. I wonder if she could fully comprehend the evil that she was contending because it's 50 years later and it feels like now it's changed. People sleeping on the streets while student flats lie empty, Tory housing policy still deranged. And those sky buildings that they built back then in Peggy's backyard, well now they get coated in polyethylene and end up charred, filled with the bodies of the vulnerable and the unaccounted for, the people the press simultaneously mourn for and abhor, just like just continue to allow but at least Peggy made a stand and you know what the move to Jasmine she ended up owning her own land Peggy if you can hear me our priorities are so different I'm more concerned with ending eviction due to universal credit but the sheer rashness of your gentle protest has filled my heart inside my chest forever Geordie lasses say it best how our new Castle City Council sling your hook or give it a rest. Yeah.